So as you can see, here's my part that we're gonna work with for these examples of chaining selection and how you can improve your workflow as well as modify your chain. So as always, we need to be in the manufacturer workspace for this to work. We need to create our setup. In the case of this part here, we're gonna go ahead and just say milling. I'm gonna go and pick my Z and my X because my part is not orientated correctly. And we're gonna hit okay. So first and foremost, I do get these questions a lot about this is how do I fix these chains? How do I modify these chains? Well, in the case of this part, it's not some of the best examples out there, but it does work quite well. So in if I wanted to rough out this whole part, normally I would go to an adaptive clearing toolpath. However, in the case of this actual instance, we're gonna use a couple of different toolpaths, but show you how the chaining and how you select your boundaries is all identical. So the first one I'm gonna do as always is I'm actually gonna do a 2D adaptive clearing. And we're gonna go ahead and pull just a nice small tool from my shop crib if I have one. So I do have a quarter inch tool. Again, guys, don't focus too much on the tooling. It's all about our geometry selection and our boundaries here. So what it's asking me is to pick a pocket. Now this is the first thing that I show anybody inside of Fusion. If we're working with a pocket, inside or outside, it doesn't matter. As you can see, if I put my mouse on the floor and click, it's gonna give me a blue line for a boundary, and then it's gonna give me a lighter shade of blue or purple, depending on your settings, for the actual pocket area. So if I pick a second pocket here, you're gonna notice we now have what's called an open chain, which means it's not fully enclosed. And again, here is our closed chain for those boundaries that we've selected. And again, we didn't do anything fancy here, guys. We just picked the floor of the actual area we're working with. So if I go ahead and hit OK, and for this demonstration, we're gonna go ahead and turn off our stock so that it's not getting in our way. Yes, I know there's gonna be collisions and stuff, but as you can see here, with our open pocket, our toolpath is more likely to start off of the actual stock and work its way in. And this is true in nature, whether you're doing a 2D adaptive clearing or even a 2D pocket, if I come back and pick those two areas again, that open pocket is definitely trying to start outside and that closed pocket is starting to inside of the boundary. And as you're seeing it, we're helically boring down inside there. Now, I do get this question a lot is, how do I modify these actual pockets that we're selecting? Well, it's relatively simple. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and go up to the top. We're gonna pick just about any one of our roughing cycles or finishing cycles. I'm gonna go ahead and say geometry. Again, this is a 2D tool path. It'll be a little different when we start to talk about 3D, but as it's asking is a pocket selection. Let's say for some reason, I only wanted to rough in to roughly where this wall sits. So if I pick that edge, you're seeing that it is automatically giving me a floor. However, if I pick that edge a second time, I now have the ability to manipulate and modify that boundary. So one thing I may want to do here is I may want a open chain versus a closed chain. So if I say open chain, again, sometimes you're gonna have to pick this a couple of times or reconfigure how you pick it. The idea is, is that we want that chain only in that area. And then the red arrow does signify the direction my tool is gonna come across there. So if I wanna flip what side I'm working on, again, I could either pick the red arrow or I could checkbox the reverse button allowing me to go to either side. So we can extend the lengths of these and we'll come back to this, but let's go ahead and start by hitting okay. And now Fusion again is automatically extending this based on a roughing cycle. So if we hit okay a second time, what you're gonna notice is we are staying to the right of that edge that we selected. We're not going around the actual corners. We're not having any issues there. And that's because it's predicting an automatic extension for what we want. Now. If we go back and we do a 2D contour with the same mindset here, again, I'm gonna pick my edge the first time, I'm gonna select the second time, we're going open, I'm bringing it down and around. And this is one of those examples where you see it's trying to predict that it goes the long way around. However, I'm gonna go ahead and pick these two little fillets here, giving me that solid blue line all the way around where I want my tool to make contact. So if I hit okay this time, and we get out of our tool path, you're gonna notice we're starting basically right on that edge. I don't wanna start on that edge. I would like to start off that edge and walk into my actual part profile. That's where that extension is extremely handy. So now there's two ways to extend. There is the ability in the passes tab to extend. And what you could actually do here is when you extend here, it's called tangential fragment extension. 
is it's automatically going to extend both ends of your chain as well. You'll see this here in a minute. So we've extended both ends. If I selected multiple chains now, the problem is going to be is the fact that it's going to extend all of my chains, right? So I don't want them all extended. I want to control each one individually. This is where when I'm inside this toolpath, I may not use tangential fragment. I could also make multiple 2D contours, which might get a little annoying depending on your settings. But we're going to go to the geometry tab, and then I'm actually, you could double click on, or you can click this little gear here for the settings. But now let's say I want to extend the start by 0.5 on this one and the end by 0.25. And what you're going to notice is I now get this kind of construction line look from the design workspace that is signifying what is getting extended or how it's getting extended. Again, we're going to go ahead and move over. I'm going to say one inch on both ends here. So at one inch, we're started way off of our part. Again, not the perfect example on this part. You would never machine it this way, right, guys? But as you're seeing is this is giving me the ability to actually predict what is going to happen with that chain when we go in and we select those boundaries and extend them out. So again, we did two different entries versus exits. Again, this one was the same on both ends. However, multiple different lengths all plugged into the same chain selection. So now let's go ahead and pivot real quick and let's take a look at a little different scenario. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go for a 3D adaptive clearing. And what you're gonna notice here in my geometry tab is I don't have chain. That's the first big change for anybody and everybody out there is how do I select what I wanna do? Well, 3D is very model aware. So you're no longer thinking in a mindset of telling the actual path what to machine, you're telling it where to contain and stay within. So by default, we do have a machining boundary of none. If I go down to selection, what you're gonna notice is this starts to look a lot more familiar like chain selection from 2D. So now with that being said is I need to go ahead and define what I wanna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's say we're gonna do this pocket here. And what you're gonna notice is I'm gonna pick an edge I could pick the floor of this as well. Doesn't really matter, but what you're seeing is we're getting a face contour versus an actual closed chain. And this is where the difference starts to step up in the world of fusion. So again, as you could pick the floor like a pocket, as you've done in the past, we're gonna go ahead and actually exit that one. We're gonna pick both pockets. And as you can see, it's both gonna be a closed contour. That's the way 3D does work. It works off a closed contour, not an open. If you guys want to see content on an open kind of scenario or how to manipulate this more, go ahead and check out the video that I created. It's called the secret boundary selection. But this is where we define what we want our tool to do. So we do have to be aware that that tool could go all the way to the outside of that boundary, meaning our tool is actually tangent to that edge on the outside. We could stay on center or we could go tool inside. Personally, if I'm doing pockets, I tend to stay tool inside. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And we are going to get a little bit of a hang up here. So we're going to have to fix that. And that's because 3D really loves to do rest machining. So again, for demonstration purposes, guys, I'm turning off rest machining so we can get a path on that part and start to look at what's going on. So as you're seeing here, 3D also makes automatic step downs based on those profiles. But this is where we're starting to see how that chain selection really does make a difference. So we have an open pocket here. However, this is a closed pocket but it's actually helically entering in both of those scenarios the same. Now, if we were to go back and say, for example, I turn on stock, and again, stock is gonna have a weird chain selection as you're used to. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now what we should recognize is that it doesn't actually start off the part. So again, there's gonna be times where you have to manipulate or do certain things individually to achieve this task. This is also where I'm gonna pause because I don't like when people tend to try to overdo stuff in the world of 3D. And a lot of people do because they get in there and they get too click happy. So I'm gonna recreate 3D from scratch and we're just gonna make it as simple as possible. And this is probably one of my favorite things about Fusion is how that when you go in and you select, for example, half inch flat end mill, we're gonna go ahead and just hit okay. Fusion is automatically recognizing where my model is in comparison to my stock for my setup. My stock for my setup changes. Obviously, everything and anything is going to change as well. As you can see here, we have our part coming in, roughing everything out. Again, we are fighting some rust machining, so let's get that turned off. And just like that, with one tool path, 
we've come in and basically roughed out this entire part, automatically recognized our pocket. So coming in and selecting chains as a roughing strategy in 3D isn't necessary. Now, using some of our other toolpaths, it is extremely necessary. So if I was to pivot real quick to like a horizontal toolpath, still using that flat end mill. And now this is where I love the selection boundary. And this is where you have a lot of different ways to do stuff. So we could do the old school way of hard edge selection, or we can do the actual being able to pick a face, which is extremely beneficial too, to pick up anything and everything. Now, every case is different when you use these different selection methods. As you can see, I could actually have problems if we hit okay, avoiding certain holes or skipping over holes or dropping into holes. That's why it's always handy to be able to go in and define each thing individually. This is also a great example of why when my tool is set to outside, you're noticing that it's dropping off the edge of my part and running around the outside of my part. So if we go back and we redefine this and we're gonna actually say tool center on boundary, and I'm not gonna give it any extra, which as you're seeing, some people may give it a little extra. We are now perfectly on center with that outermost edge and the innermost edge. We're also chasing all those actual counter bores and hole tops as we go through this as well. So again, as if I jump back into that horizontal tool path, I'm not gonna do face contours, I'm just gonna use the old school traditional method of hard edges. Again, hitting okay. What you're gonna notice is we're now skipping over a lot of these holes automatically, which makes life much easier. Again, if we were to do the same exact strategy here, we're gonna go through and I'm just gonna derive off into a flat tool path. Flat is very similar to 3D horizontal. Again, it's a little different entry approach. It's a little different way that it's going around and machining these faces, but you do have a little bit different control here. So that being said is, as you can see, we could use a lot of different tools for being able to manufacture these parts to actually go in and define chains. Now, if you're a router guy, or if you're doing like plasma cutting, or I wanna cut some of these out of a bar or a sheet, the real value starts to add up if we went in with a 2D con or not a 2D contour, or 3D contour. And then I'm gonna say, I want a silhouette of my part. And again, you could go selection and then we could actually say silhouette. And what you're seeing here is anything that is a through feature is gonna show up based on that silhouette. So again, this is an awesome thing inside of Fusion where we could go you know, inside only, outside only, and pick up on those profiles. So if I just wanted to go around the outside of my part, as you can see, I grabbed 3D contour. We're gonna go ahead and use the silhouette. I would like the tool outside of boundary is the furthest out distance we're gonna go. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And again, we're going to get a completely different scenario. So because of how 3D boundary selection works, we always stay in the outermost point, just so you guys know that. So if we were to go back now and say 2D contour, Again, we're gonna now do a silhouette inside loops. No, we want outside loops. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna hit okay again. As you're seeing, we are now always staying outside of that part profile. One thing that is happening here, if you guys didn't know, we would have to adjust our heights. So we're gonna go ahead and say, we wanna go to our model bottom. And again, now we're going all the way down to our model bottom. The cool thing with this, and this is what I really love about this kind of silhouette feature that's new, is if I was to always be outside profiling things to cut out blanks, I would go ahead and turn this into a template, allowing me to save this, and I no longer now have to select the chain based on the part profile. So the last thing I am gonna cover, and this is probably the one that I see the most people say on Facebook, on YouTube videos, they complain about the fact that it doesn't look like how it used to look. It's okay, guys, because if you go in and you treat it the way that you've seen it in the past, it works identical. You don't have to worry about all these options because the first thing it always asks you is to just pick an edge or pick a face. And as you're seeing, it's automatically converting these and now telling me more information about them. But that is the best thing about this where it is allowing you to now make even more in detail adjustments to them. So that wraps up another Workflow Wednesday. I hope you guys learned something new about boundary selection and how to define your actual toolpath constraints for where your tool should and shouldn't go, as well as keeping it inside or outside of those boundaries. Before I jump off of here though, guys, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe if you like content like this. Obviously, I'm gonna keep bringing it to you, and if you would like to support my channel in any way, feel free to go down to 
CADCAM.com where you can purchase your Fusion 360 as well as custom training with yours truly. Thanks guys, have a great rest of your day.